It's good having you home. See you later. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Sam. Bye. Bye. Wait a minute, boys. Hold on. Take this. Get over your heads, all right? Okay, if you go. Nothing, it's just for work. Come on, you're gonna be late. Hey, hey. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm fine, it's just a you know, stop whacking the side of my head. Oh you no, know, it looks terrible. No, I'm alright, I'm alright, you know, it's just kids. And another day, I'm in the wrong postal address, I suppose. <laughs> you all right, mate? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Members of the jury, it says something about the sophistication of our democracy that a case like this should ever reach the courts Instead of the customary heated debate with the prosecution and defence head-to-head -head in passionate argument, both sides in this trial have spent most of their time in, well, absolute agreement with one another. Now, why is that? It is because the defendant has no choice. 
he finds himself up against a mountain of evidence which he simply cannot contest. And not just technical, police or forensic evidence, but unchallenged public witness evidence pertaining to the three most important elements in any murder case. Motive, intent, murder weapon. So, let us remind ourselves one last time of the facts that we all agree upon. On the morning of the 15th of May, the defendant, Devinder Singh, left his house at 7.15 a.m. Fact. Instead of going to school, he went in the opposite direction, along High Street, to his local Sikh temple. Fact. There he collected a three-foot sword, which he had learned to use to lethal effect in Gatka martial art classes. <laughs> From there, he set off in the direction of Manning Heath with only one thing on his mind, cold-blooded murder. Fact. Once there, he waited for his victim to approach on a route he knew he took every morning. Again, fact, ladies and gentlemen, uncontested fact. Soon after, he was seen running away from the murder scene in a distressed state in the direction of the canals where he threw away his school uniform. Then he changed his appearance at a hairdresser's. Again, all uncontested facts. So, what does this leave the defendant with? 11 minutes. 11 minutes on the heath. That's all he's got. 11 unwitnessed minutes. So what does he come up with? He had a change of heart. Decided against it. Got cold feet. And that's it. That is the defense. No evidence, no arguments, no witnesses, no proof. Just the ludicrous notion that having done everything preparatory to the commission of the murder, the defendant somehow then pulled back from the brink. Oh, and that one Thomas Haynes, a mental patient conveniently stalking the heat. Mr. Lewis. I'm sorry, my lord. Uh, quite apart from the fact that he was on a different side of the heath and nowhere near the murder when it occurred, Mr. Haynes is a known sex offender and nowhere in his criminal or mental history is there any evidence of attacks on males, let alone schoolboys. No, the whole Thomas Haynes sideshow is about something else entirely. A desperate and cynical attempt by the defense to blame an apparently inadequate police investigation. 2,000 homes in door to door inquiries, 85 police officers working more than 500 hours at an estimated cost of one and a half million pounds. Members of the jury, let us be absolutely clear about one thing this was not an inadequate police investigation. This is just another smokescreen to distract you from the obvious conclusion, namely that the defendant is guilty. <laughs> Guilty, as all the evidence shows. Ah! Guilty, as all his behavior after the event shows. Members of the jury, it is the Crown's burden to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Devinder Singh committed murder on that morning. And I concede we do not have a direct eyewitness to the crime itself. But in the absence of such direct evidence, the prosecution has no option but to draw inferences, safe inferences drawn from a large pool of evidence. And here we rely on you, members of the jury. <laughs> 
Although we have no direct witness for that moment when Davinda Singh murdered John Mayer, when you consider the overwhelming weight of evidence, the motive, the intent, the murder weapon, and the blatant attempts to conceal his guilt after the event, we submit you can draw safe inferences that the defendant is guilty as charged. And now I ask you to do the responsible thing as privileged citizens of this society and return a guilty verdict. deeds to the flat. Oh, don't look so morbid. Well, I feel morbid, Mark. I might as well be handing over my wife and family. Relax, it'll be fine. It seems this episode was meant to happen. Our meeting in court like that. My needing to make amends. There's a happy serendipity about it. Yeah, well, let's hope so. Tony, Mark Waters. I'm fine, I'm fine. Look, something you can do for me. Okay, bye. Right, that's done. He's agreed to offer you a loan against your flat as security. With a loan, you buy shares in the Japanese research company, and then, in a day or two, when they're bought out, you pay Tony back out of the profits. Voila. How much have you asked for? Not a lot, 90 grand. Jesus. There's no point in pissing about. Who is he? He's fine. Where does his money come from? That's not your problem, is what it? What if it doesn't work out? It will. Relax. Trust me. It's as solid as a rock. You're not losing your bottle, are you? No. Of course not. Good. How nice to see you. Father's your face. Yeah, Thank you for coming. I was just reading about you in the paper. Well, not you, you know, to try it. Yeah. I know sometimes this blanket coverage, it feels... Suffocating, I'm sure. Yes. Ah. Tell me, have you made a decision? Because if not, you know, there's no need to rush it. I'm sure the rector is flexible and you can, you know, you can always join us again next year. No, Father. I have given it thought. And I have decided. And? I won't be coming back. Oh, no, Charles. And I had so prayed you would. It's your girlfriend, is it? I remember things were never settled there between you. Well, it's not Isabel. It's quite the opposite. Then what, Charles? Oh. Oh. It's just... I'm still not certain. Oh. I remember you told us once. We don't choose this. We are chosen. I mean, when I came to the seminary five years ago, I did so out of choice. And I thought that by this time, I would feel chosen. And I don't. Well, now do I. And it may surprise you to learn that cast iron certainty comes to very few. And so, just not being certain, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. Oh, dear God, no. Not being certain speaks in your favour. Certainty comes to those nutters who stand on orange crates in Hyde Park on Sunday morning. But I still feel I need a sign. Something which speaks to me. I see. And how would you like it? A burning bush? A parting sea? You're not taking me seriously. And you, Charlie boy, are taking it too seriously. And I'd be willing to guess are looking in all the wrong places for your signs.
Do you mind if I join you? No, no. No, sit down. It's nice to see you, Anne. You know, I thought maybe after our, our chat the other day that we might both be sensible and do the old avoiding thing. They're only part of CMO. Did you see who did it? I think it was just some junkie pissed off that he couldn't find anything to take in my flat, so he, you know, whacked me over the, the, the head with a baseball bat. How do you know it's a baseball bat? Because I saw it. Corey. Thank you, my lord. <laughs> Eleven minutes. That's what all this boils down to. All these witnesses, all those police hours, all those doors they knocked on, all those statements they took. But still, not one fingerprint, not one bloodstain, just Eleven minutes. The eleven minutes for which there is no witness. The eleven minutes for which there is only circumstantial evidence. Evidence from which my learned friends for the Crown would ask you to draw only damning inferences. Well, there's another word for inference, and that's speculation. And there's another word for speculation, too, and that's guessing. And there's another expression for guessing, and that's, I don't know. They don't know. I don't know. None of us will ever know for certain. But I don't know is not good enough for a court of law. I don't know isn't good enough for the family of the victim. And I don't know is certainly not good enough to get an innocent boy convicted of murder. <laughs> so how do we do it then? How do we reach a verdict in a case where nobody knows? We find the answer, ladies and gentlemen, by understanding the wider context, the bigger picture, understanding, in fact, what this case is really all about. As we've already heard, Duvinder Singh is no violent aggressor. He's a perfectly normal teenager. The walls of his bedroom don't carry pictures of guns or terrorists, but photos of Britney Spears, Robbie Williams, David Beckham. Yet, as we know, on the morning of the 15th of May, this perfectly normal teenager was capable of breaking into a temple, arming himself with a sword, and heading out to get his revenge on a classmate. So how does this angel sit alongside this devil? The answer, members of the jury, lies in a long history of political injustice. For generations, Sikhs have been subjugated, vilified, tortured. Many of them have come to England, become valued and respected members of our society as doctors, teachers. Yet, tragically, this bullying continues, particularly in our schools. As you recall, been has told us almost all of his cousins and Sikh friends have suffered similar fates. Is it any wonder that they should wish to protect themselves? That they should learn self-defence? The prosecution has tried to prejudice you with talk of an alien Sikh culture. Please let us not be confused about this. These are peaceful, law-abiding Britons protecting themselves for the right to their own survival. 
And yes, I can imagine what my colleagues are thinking. They're thinking, oh, here they go, turning this into something political, painting a sympathetic portrait of the defendant as a victim. Not at all! It is just vital that we all understand the background to this so-called aggressive culture with its self-defence and its swords. That is a vicious and inflammatory racist slur. And one which the prosecution has been shamefully quick to exploit. And what about our own policemen? The Crown insists that this was a thorough investigation. But how can it have been? When trained policemen knock on 2,000 doors, yet totally disregard a known criminal at large on the heath at the time. When they check the defendant's behavioural history and ignore his medical history, which would have revealed an atrophied shoulder, totally incapable of those downward thrusts from the right required to produce that same pattern of wounds. This investigation is rotten to the core, totally incompetent, based entirely on racial prejudice. Yes, it is true, a sense of retribution took Devinder Singh to the heath that morning. And there it took him to the very brink of murder, but no further. Overcome by the fruitlessness of violence, Duvinda threw the sword away. He changed his mind. Changed his mind. Didn't do it. And I defy you, members of the jury, to look this gentle, kind, shy, very frightened and confused boy in the eyes and tell me I'm wrong. Thank you, my lord. Right, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. All the material upon which you have to decide this case is now before you. The time has now come for you to retire to consider your verdict, which at this stage must be a unanimous one. In the unlikely event that you have found your verdict by five o'clock tonight, I must ask you not to talk about this matter to anyone at home. Your decision is one which you must arrive at jointly without influence from outside. Everyone's mobile phones, please. Thank you. I'd like to draw your attention to the bell. Ring this if you need anything. Food, drink, and the bathrooms are at the end of the room. Exhibits will be brought to you shortly, and you've got fresh coffee and tea in the thermos. Any questions? Right, well, good luck. Good night. Well, we all heard the charge. We better elect a foreman. How do we want to do this? <laughs> um, I suggest all those who want to be considered as jury foreman, raise their hands. Yeah, I don't mind. All right. Two candidates. Um, I suggest that uh, we, the two candidates, 
turn our backs and the rest of you vote for your choice. Right, all those who want Warren now raise their hands. Now, all those who want me now raise their hands. Yeah, OK. Well? You won. Narrowly. Thank you, everybody who voted for me. I pledge I will do my best to guide us to reach a swift conclusion. And now I will take my place at the head of the table. Right. Let us begin. I propose we start with vote. What? I see no reason to waste everyone's time when we might already have reached a unanimous verdict. Uh, yeah, hang on a minute. I thought the point was to end up with a verdict. Yes, but what if we already agree? <laughs> but we won't. <laughs> How can you say that? Because that's the whole point, isn't it? I and mean, that's why there are so many of us from all walks of life. We're bound to disagree. Then... We talk it through to make sure. What? That we don't make snap judgments. Snap judgments is just another name for instincts. And first instincts are the most useful things we can have in a case like this. Otherwise, people talk and talk, it goes around and around, nothing gets decided. But are we all right? I've had a cup of tea. Tea? No, madame. Please, we have three hours. We take the tea at the halfway point. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, you're the foreman. Since when did you decide on tea breaks? Look, do you want me to do this or not? I want you to stand up in court and say guilty or not guilty. I don't need you to tell me when we can or can't have tea breaks. In that case, I stand down. Oh, please, this is absurd. Look, we need rules. Otherwise, we sit here for one month and do nothing. All right. Let's vote. What's to lose? What's to lose is we've all declared our hand. Let's get it over with. You know, she might have a point. At least we know where we all stand. Right. Thank you. All those who find the defendant guilty of murder as charged raise their hands. Those who find him innocent? Abstentions? Well, we have a hung jury. Surprise, surprise. So what do we do now? Um, well, since the guilty votes are in the majority and there are only three not guilty votes, I suggest we ask the not guilty voters to explain to us why they voted that way. Great, so they can try and bully us into changing our minds. No, so we can understand. I don't mind saying why I voted not guilty. It's because I think the other guy did it. Who? Thomas Haynes. Do me a favour. So you really think this, uh, this Thomas Haynes committed the murder? I think there's a chance. Oh. I suppose uh, Mickey Mouse was his accomplice, was he? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> really that's helpful, very, isn't it? Well, we've been in court all week. Please, well, please, please. Does no one listen to the evidence? We have a lot to oh, do. what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Please, everyone. A known violent criminal was on the heath and they didn't investigate. They just went with the person that fitted the crime. That's an inadequate investigation. The investigation's not on trial. An Asian kid was the only suspect. That's typical police. Mm. There we go again. 
If it had been a black or an Asian nutter, they'd have checked him out. Uh, I didn't think people talk like that anymore. <laughs> Only because attitudes haven't changed. So why weren't Thomas Haynes' fingerprints on the sword? I don't know. Maybe he was wearing gloves. Well, why would he be wearing gloves? So he doesn't leave prints? Well, that's a pretty rational thing to do. No nutter would think of doing that. Oh, what? So in order to be disturbed, he has to be foaming at the mouth or dressed like Napoleon? Could I just say... I didn't like that policeman. What policeman? The one with the moustache. Uh, there wasn't one with a moustache. Are you sure? Please, everyone, let's keep to one issue at a time. We're on the issue of fingerprints. Maybe he wiped the prints clean. Oh, great. Now we've got a nutter with gloves and a napkin. What, is it a silver service nutter? <laughs> well, can, look, he could have been wearing just gloves just tell generally. Just what happened to the blue. Why is it not fun? Do you have to be quiet? Say one please, everyone. This is ridiculous. We're supposed to be working together. Time is ticking by. Now will you admit it was a mistake asking people to vote? Oh, all right, I admit. I shouldn't and this was always the danger. People forming two unbridgeable camps. And no one is willing to give an inch. I know, so go on. You know so much better. You be for Oh, no, that's oh, not my point. point. No, this is crazy. We're tired. Why don't we just start again tomorrow? Because it's four o'clock. We've still got an hour. I know that, but we're not getting anywhere. I'm tired and fed up. So am I. Yeah, I agree. Nothing is going to be achieved like this apart from people losing their tempers and falling out with each other. Let's go home and sleep on it. Tomorrow, I resign. <sighs> well, if you're going to resign tomorrow, why don't you resign today? That way we can elect a new foreman tonight and he or she can work out some kind of order, some organisation, so this doesn't repeat itself. Good idea. Here, here. Warren, you, you put yourself up for it last time. How about it this time? No, um, no, no, thanks. I've changed my mind. Cheers. Okay. Charles, how about you? No, if you don't mind. Well, well, Marcia, you obviously have strong opinions. What about you? No, for a start, I don't have time tonight. Uh, Jeremy. But me? Yes. Um, gosh, um, goodness. What about you? Yeah. Me? Yeah, you. Responsible, organised. Look more like Henry Fonda than anybody else in here. <laughs> but the obvious candidate. Seconded. Oh, Dodd did. All those in favour of Peter being foreman? No, wait, wait a minute. Yes. Right, that appears to be a unanimous yes. verdict. Sorry. You know, I didn't want to get you involved. I didn't want to get anyone involved. I did. Why didn't you tell me? I, I don't know. Was that that, was that, that blind that I didn't even see that? Swap them around. Oh, no. I... Look, I didn't know what I was doing. It was... You know, I, I just wanted to be someone else. I just, I just wanted to be... I just wanted to do something for me, you know, just once. I just wanted to forget, I just wanted to breathe. That's nice. Look, please don't take it wrong. No, no, I'm glad I could have, I could have been a help. 
Oh, you? no, it's not like that. It's not like what? You take some love-struck, impressionable drunk and you... You wind them up and then you... You throw them in the shade, oh. Johnny, it wasn't about picking you up. You know, I didn't know I was going to run into you. Johnny! Johnny. time in my whole life when I've been ill. Here, drink this. Thanks. My body wouldn't know how because there's never been anyone to look after me. You don't have to stay, you know. Be all right. Tough as an old boot. You know, I wouldn't hear of it. I shall get my belongings and if you don't mind, I shall make use of your couch. Oh. And then when we're finished with the trial, I'll help you sort things out. I don't want to go into a home. No. When I go, I want to go in my own time. Right. Could you be there for me? Of course. Like that, the last rites from someone I know. Last rites? Someone who knows my story. I can't give those. They have to be given by an ordained priest. question and I want you to tell me the truth was it you what do you mean was it me what did you do did you follow him home who you know exactly who well, what do you expect hey I'm not going to sit back and do nothing why Len why? Because I saw what was going on between you. Nothing happened. He was all over you. He never did a thing. I saw it. That lunch. I saw it for myself. Lunch? You followed me? Yeah, I followed you and I saw how you was behaving. I think you're confusing your job Taking with your Taking clothes life. in the court, getting changed in the toilet. I toilets. think you're confusing our marriage with surveillance. There's no confusion here, Rose. I know exactly what is going well, on. Well, nothing happened, Len. Nothing. And nothing ever was going to happen. But it happened. In here. In here. Yeah. It did. Well, that is just as bad. No, it isn't, Len. 
It's human. I didn't act on it. It's not a crime. So what are you going to do now? Batter me. You're going to take your baseball bat this out of me? This court case has ruined everything. I knew it the minute the summons come through that door. I saw how much you wanted it. I wanted to be alone. No, you wanted to escape. Yeah, have you ever asked yourself why, Len? Ever thought of that? I hate living here. It's unbearable. You never change. That's why I like talking to him. I have problems, but he tried to change. But don't you think I would? Don't you think I'd change if I could get my leg back? It's not about your leg, Len. It's about you. <laughs> that is so easy for you to say. Where's the easy bit, Len? Can you show me? Where's the easy bit about living with you? No, he said no disturbances, okay? Uh, I've got to talk to him. No. Look, they've had a bad day in the jewelry room. And it was trying to come up with some kind of agenda or something for tomorrow. It's important. It's about the boy. Tell it. No. What is this? Hmm? Ever since he got on this jury, you've been trying to muscle in, offer your opinion where it isn't called for. Oh, come on. It's his trial. He's the juror here. What's going on with you? Hmm? Nothing. Yes, there is. There's all in thing going on, which is frankly embarrassing. What is it? Hmm? Don't think you'll come up with the right decision without your guidance? Oh, no, it's not that. Well, oh, God. is it just that you hate someone else being the centre of attention? Is that it? Worried that the family's focused on someone else? No. Yes, it is. That's it. Absolute nonsense. Well, if you ask me, you, 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 you need a, a, a couple of good hobbies. Oh, really? Yes. We just go home and, and find out whether the, the English cricket team is touring this winter. Take Mum and go and join them. Or get yourself hooked on the bloody internet. Oh, all right. Do you tell him this? I went down to the canals and spoke to a couple of schoolboys. Daddy, go. It's important. Well, tell him to call me. Trust the process, you said. Do nothing and trust the process. Well, we've done nothing. We trusted the process. Now we want action. Is that right? So how do you think I feel? I was there when that boy was born. Dropped into my hands. I cleaned the blood off him. Held him to my chest. In the beginning, I sat with him all night. Fed him with a bottle, taught him his first words, picked him up when he fell. He was a gift from God. He was my everything. 
so you don't think I've had to hold myself back? Huh? Contain myself a thousand times from jumping across that court and tearing his dirty head off. I'll make you promise now that I made on that first day. If that jury don't deliver justice, I'll deliver justice of my own.